Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Hannon, and welcome to Making the Grade. I'm really pleased to have a guest with me today, and that's Shelley Millick. Shelley is the director of the Winona Area Public Schools Foundation. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about the foundation and, and how it began and, and what's its mission? Well, it started in 1991 with a group of concerned citizens that just wanted to help out the school district and do a little bit more for Winona Area Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And our mission basically is to enhance and enrich programming so that we can help support other additional funding um, and that type of thing that may not be available in the regular district resources. So uh, how do you secure some of your funds? A lot, most, well, all of our funds that are coming in through donations. So it's community support and wonderful people that we have in the area that truly believe in the public school system and want to help support it. I see a lot of those, and, and I'm one of those people that, that, that uh, donate also, and I like to give it in a form of a memorial um, to honor those people that, that I know that have given a lot maybe to the community or relatives. and and uh, I think it's always pretty nice, but I see that you can, you can also give uh, um, in, in honor of somebody mm -hmm. too, yes. rather than just in, as a memorial right. for, their, yeah. for their demise. So it is definitely a, a new trend that we have happening a lot. If somebody has a birthday or some kind of event or anniversary, something like that, a lot of people like to send a check or a donation directly into the foundation. And then we do put it in our newsletter in honor of from that person, so they get honored that way. So could a could a person leave uh, maybe some of the, like some of their estate to the uh, foundation? Yes, um, we have what's called the Lowell Nelson Society, which is basically a leave a legacy program, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people will just go ahead and write something in their will or their estate saying that in the future they'd like to give some money to the foundation for Winona Area Public Schools. And when they do start it out, it isn't written in stone or a contract, but it basically is just their wish when they're first setting that up. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Are there a fair number of people that are, are part of that? Or? We do have a good start already, but we're looking to always increase that and have people remember us that way as well. And sometimes that's just maybe uh, um, not only in the will, but just putting uh, the foundation down in their insurance policy as a... Exactly. As a, Annuity, beneficiary, yeah. anything yeah. like that as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, that's a great opportunity. Now, this is the fourth year, I understand, that uh, the foundation is hosting a, a gala. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, and Dr. Hannon, you've been a wonderful support to all these years with that as well. This year's event is called An Evening in Tuscany. It's on March 15th. It's going to be held at Visions Event Center once again. And it starts at 6 o'clock in the evening and goes till 10. And what we're going to be doing this year is raising funds for mobile technology. Very good. And I understand we've got some very good uh, sponsors uh, in our community that are going to help out. Sponsors again this year, I think every year, have been Merchants Bank and Winona National Bank. And they continue to be such a wonderful support for our community and our school system. And um, so I just can't thank them enough for always stepping forward and being a great sponsor for the event and for the school. So uh, at at the uh, at the gala, there'll be some, some festivities going on, I take it, if I recall, from yes, past years. Yes. and. So what we're doing this year, as I mentioned, is kind of an Italian Tuscan theme. Um, it's really a time for people to come out of this cold and celebrate um, education in the community. There's going to be things where you can bring your mobile technology with you, answer some trivia questions. It's called polleverywhere.com. So we're going to do that where people can kind of stop and just see some um, things on the screen that could be fun. We're having an Italian fair, which is a silent auction, a lot of different Italian things that we found for bid. We're having a dessert auction, um, and also this year, which is kind of a different event, we're called um, an area called Market Italy, where people can come and enjoy Italian appetizers and look at some of the product that they can purchase uh, at the market. Very good, very good. Uh, how do we get tickets for this? Tickets can be either purchased online at www.foundationwaps.org, or you can call me at 494-1004 and, and order them. And how much are they? $50 a piece. Any discount for a large number? Um, actually, no, but, <laughs> but we'd love to have the large numbers come forward. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else you can tell us about the foundation? I know I'm, I'm a member of the Lowell Nelson uh, Society, and, 
and uh, I'm very proud to say that. And uh, but is there anything else that we need to know? Yeah. Well, basically, what we're just always trying to do is is um, provide information. We have a lot of scholarships that we do. We do grants every single month um, for things like artists in residence or field trips or um, technology. We've supported a lot with the smart boards and that type of thing. And again, what, what I mentioned, we're going to be doing mobile technology this year. So we continue to look for things to fund for the school and help out and through support of different ways. Very good, very good, Shelley. Thank you for being on Thank Making you. the Grade today. A state-of-the-art fiber optic network. Sure, you've all heard that, but what does it mean? Well, if you're an HPC customer, it's television in crystal clear high definition and whole home DVR, blazing fast internet speeds, perfect for gaming or movies, phone service with your choice of features, including unlimited long distance. And now, HPC has expanded service throughout much of Southeast Minnesota. Call today and see what it's like to be on a state-of-the-art fiber optic network with a local company receiving national recognition for their service. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Hannon, Superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools, and you're watching Making the Grade. And it's really an honor and privilege to have uh, some young students here from Winona Senior High School. Uh, AAA award winners, uh, uh, Alex Stockhausen and, and Audrey Sharmer, as well as Activities Director for the Public Schools, Brad Brzezinski. Um, boy, a AAA award winner is, is, is about as high an honor as you can get in, in a high school these days. And uh, Mr. Brzezinski is going to give us a uh, just kind of tell us a little bit about what it takes to, to be that uh, AAA uh, a award winner. So, Brad? Well, as, as Dr. Hannon said, certainly these, uh, these students are the, are the best and the brightest, and we're very, very proud to, uh, to have Audrey and Alex here with us today. The, the AAA program, it's a, it's a program sponsored by the Minnesota State High School League. Um, it, it was created in 1988, and the goal, the, the AAA, the 3A stand for academics, athletics, and, and the arts. And the goal of the program is to recognize students like Audrey and Alex that have, have, have really excelled in all three of those areas. Uh, it's, it's, it's recognizing those students that are uh, well-rounded and, uh, and have done what they need to in the classroom, um, are typically involved in a multitude of other athletics and, and activities, which is certainly true of, of these two. They're both three sport athletes, are, are both involved uh, uh, heavily in, in music programs and other arts programs, and and and, and like I said, they're, they're the they're the cream of the crop. They're the they're the the, the end product here of, of what we're working on in, in uh, Winona area public schools, and uh, certainly these two are, are excellent representatives of, of our school district. Brad, how many uh, uh, students did we have that that uh, you you worked with to, and then we finally had selected sure. uh, yeah, the, Alex the, and, the and Audrey. The process we we started with nominations from from district uh, teachers. Uh, coaches, advisors, etc. We had an initial group of about 40 kids that that were invited to be a part of this application process, and then uh, eventually that group got whittled down to 10 finalists. And then of those 10 finalists, uh, Audrey and Alex emerged as the uh, as the winners from Winona Senior High. You know, I think that that says a lot of the strength of our of our high school, especially when you have 40 students that can get nominated that, that coaches and, and teaching staff and others think that they're worthy of, of the Absolutely. award. You know, we get 40 and, and we end up with, with these two because we can only have two people, one, one girl and one boy. And uh, it's just amazing. So uh, Audrey and Alex, I'm going to ask you some questions and, and, and give you both an opportunity to answer. So describe some of the activities that you've been involved with at Winona Senior High. Well, there are a lot of activities to be involved with at the high school. Like in academics, athletics, and arts, there are so many different activities to be involved with. Um, some of the main activities I'm involved in, well, my three sports, soccer, Nordic skiing, and track and field. And then some of the extracurricular activities are Knowledge Bowl, and there's the Spanish Honor Society, and National Honor Society, and HOPE, which is helping our peers excel. You kind of get to know the newer students in the district mm -hmm. and the foreign exchange students, and you just kind of help them feel welcome in the school district. Okay, Audrey? Uh, just like Alex, I am a three-sport athlete. I play um, basketball, volleyball, and track. And then I'm also involved in our student council, and like Alex, in National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, and Knowledgeable. I'm also in W Club, which is a club that is like comprised of letter winners, and we pretty much our main thing is we play in our Winterfest dance, and I'm in Link Leaders, which okay. at the beginning is like a freshman transition thing, and I think that's it. 
That's, <laughs> maybe, That's the, maybe the tip of the iceberg though too. What are a couple of, uh, of, in these activities that you involve with, what are a couple of memorable events that, or, or even the activity itself that you've been involved with that, that stand out in your mind? I think the sports, they have, there's so many benefits in the sports. Like you get to make so many new friends and you get to meet people. And when I was younger, I was very shy. I didn't talk to anybody. I never talked to teachers. I was just so afraid of talking, just so reserved. But being in sports, it kind of forces you to come out of your shell and it forces you to interact with people and it's really a good thing. It helped me grow a lot as a person, being in the sports. Great. Um, I definitely agree with Alex. Like sports have really just helped like build me as a person. But I also think like NHS, I found like all the community service. I really enjoyed that, especially like some of the events we help out with like Special Olympics. It's really fun personally for me to go and see all of these different kids competing. Well, how have you been able to balance this? You know, you've got sports and, and academics, arts, and, and these involvements. And, and I know I hear parents once in a while saying, I've got a couple kids and they're driving me wild because I'm driving all over the place. And, and you're on the other end. You're the ones that are involved with these things, that, but yet you're, you're able to, uh, to do them, maybe get yourself to these things and places now. But how do you, how do you uh, handle all that? I think it's just putting forth all of your mental effort and physical effort into what you're doing at the moment, not trying to think of everything at once. You just have to focus on what you're doing at the time being. Because if you try to think about what you have to do or where you have to be an hour from now, it gets in the way of what you're doing at the moment. So I think you just have to <laughs> be in the moment and put forth all your effort then. Yeah, I definitely agree with that and just being organized. Like I have a planner and it is just filled with stuff. And it's just like a lot to me is prioritizing what is most important personally and then mm -hmm. being able to schedule everything out after that. So would you say you're both very organized? That's a, that's a key thing? I try to be organized. Yeah, <laughs> not always succeeding, but we try. Do either of you work or have a, have a part-time job I work, on top of all this? Yeah, I work at the American down by the bridge. Okay. I'm a housekeeper. I okay. clean rooms okay. on the weekends. Do you uh, wow. clean, clean the, your room as well as you clean house for yeah. that? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Um, I personally don't have a job. I just like, I live on a hobby farm, so I just okay. work kind of on that. But I don't really consider that a job, more chores, so. What value do you see in the opportunities that, that you've, been, you've had as a student at well, senior high school? Well, like I said before, there's just so many opportunities that help you grow and help you to learn, or to help you to know people in the school and they help you to feel more welcome. You feel more like you have a sense of community and you know people and you have people to talk to. So, I don't know, being involved and taking advantage of the opportunities is what really helps you to become a part of the school and not just watch everything happen. You can actually be involved in what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Alex. Just personal growth. Like, the more you get involved, the more you can figure out what you personally like and what defines you as a character. What you make, I've made my best friends through sports and other clubs, and it's just fun. So. You like to have fun every day too? Yep. <laughs> while you're learning, while you're playing, while you're practicing, it's all yeah. part of that positive attitude. Right. Yeah, very good. Well, you're both seniors. Gonna graduate in June if we don't have a snow day that day. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's the next step for you after, after graduation? I have, I think I've narrowed it down to two colleges, either the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities or Winona State University here in Winona. How about some of the, uh, um, the other curricular activities or other things uh, with, with your sports? Would you be uh, doing them at the university or maybe more uh, just stick to the studies? Or I definitely think I'm going to focus more on the studies as I get into college, but if there's like a soccer club or a Nordic skiing club, I'd definitely like to take advantage of that too. Very good. Audrey? Um, just like <clears throat> Alex, I've narrowed it down to a couple of schools, and I guess I still want to pursue sports, especially basketball. I've had a couple different colleges <clears throat> recruit me so I definitely want to pursue that but maybe depending on how much time I have which I don't think will be much with basketball maybe getting involved in some other just clubs just because I enjoy staying busy. Very good. Mr. Brzezinski you know these two pretty darn well any uh, extra comments? You know like I said it's it's uh, this is a program this AAA program is really a, it's it's one of my favorite parts of the of, of my job to be able to be involved in this process and to be able to work with students like Audrey and Alex and uh, 
and to be able to recognize those students that have been able to to balance all of this. Certainly, uh, the academic piece is our number one priority. There's no question about that. But to be able to provide these other opportunities through athletics, through activities, these two are a, a perfect example of what a of what a high school student can be, and and what we certainly try to promote within our schools. Very good. Well, I'd like to thank the viewers for watching today. And again, I'd like to thank my guests, uh, Audrey Sharmer, Alex Stockhausen, AAA award winners at Winona Senior High School, and Activities Director Brad Brzezinski for being with me. This is Dr. Scott Hannon, Superintendent of Schools, saying thank you again for watching Making the Grade. The HBC Wizards, located at 67 Main Street in Winona, are local, knowledgeable tech support that you can access for all your home or business technical needs. Conveniently located by our main office, HBC Wizards offer technical consultation, computer setup and repair, home entertainment solutions, virus and spyware removal. Put it this way, if it has something to do with your computer or TV, HBC Wizards can help. And you don't have to be an HBC customer to utilize the HBC Wizards. Walk-ins are welcome. HBC Wizards, technology demystified. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Hannon, Superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. Welcome to Making the Grade. I'm really excited to have two guests with me on the program today. Uh, one of our parents, Vanessa Fernandez-Green, and to my immediate left, uh, one of our first grade teachers, Aaron Weissenbeck. And uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Spanish Immersion Program at uh, Madison School that we're going to begin next fall. And uh, Vanessa, is one of our parents who has a son that will be in the program, and we're excited about that. We're excited about the program. So, Vanessa, you were a member of the Foreign Language Immersion Planning Group, correct? Yes. And uh, how did you get on that, uh, that committee or that uh, <laughs> program planning group? Um, well, I was asked if I would be interested in helping uh, to, or consulting with the the committee about um, doing a Spanish immersion program and I was extremely interested. I was very excited about this opportunity for Winona um, and I think it's going to be a great opportunity for our students. Um, the workforce in Minnesota as well as the entire United States needs bilingual uh, workers or people um, to communicate with others in their own language. But they also, um, knowing another language allows you to um, see different points of view. It allows you to understand um, and appreciate other cultures. And in terms of even test scores for our mm -hmm. students, um, even and standardized tests in English, uh, bilingual students tend to score equal or better than students that only speak one language, both in math and verbal. So I think it's going to be an amazing opportunity for the kids here. Great. My, my second question was, why do you feel Spanish is a valuable program to offer? But you really answered that. And I, and I think just to expand a little bit on the, uh, on the uh, students that are in an immersion program, the, the, the research is very clear that they do just as well or better even on English, uh, mm -hmm. on the English language, but they have to get there. It's like a certain point, maybe about third grade, the kids start scoring as well and, and even better. Mm -hmm. And that improves even as they go along. So parents shouldn't worry about their, their yeah. children not getting English or not learning and understanding to read, write, and, and speak English, correct? Right, exactly. And I wanted to say that um, one of the reasons I think that we went with Spanish as opposed to a different language um, is the fact that Spanish is the second most spoken language in the country. And also, we have the great resources of Winona State and St. Mary's University, where we have Spanish education programs. So we have students that can assist in the classroom. When they graduate from those programs, they're going to be familiar with the Winona State school system and the immersion programs. So to, to mention that, the reason that we went with Spanish. Very good. So now you have a son that's enrolled in, in the program for next fall. What are you looking forward to as a parent? Um, I'm excited to get to know the other families who are uh, looking to embark on this adventure and this journey. <laughs> um, I'm excited also just for um, him to expand his Spanish speaking uh, abilities. Uh, I think that a really important factor for students to learn a language, especially young children, is that their peers are speaking that language mm -hmm. as well. And so that's what we see personally at home. Do you, uh, do you think that there's some unknowns that, that maybe you can help with or shed light uh, on to other parents? Yeah, I think when I'm speaking with parents, other parents who are cons were considering the program, um, 
I, I think a lot of people are imagining um, their own experience in a language classroom when they were in junior high or high school and um, how they maybe they struggled through or didn't enjoy mm -hmm. it, how it was very dry, perhaps. And this is going to be a completely different experience for their children. Um, first of all, the five to seven year old brain is works very differently than uh, a young adult and they're absorbing everything. It's, it's much easier for them to pick up on the language. Um, because they're still in the process of learning English in a sense too. So um, they're just primed to pick up on another language. And um, I think there's going to be a period of adjustment because, especially for kindergartners, this is a new environment, a new experience. And on top of that, you have a teacher who's speaking a language you don't know. But I think after that initial adjustment period that it's going to be the norm for them to speak mm -hmm. Spanish at school and English at home. Very good. <laughs> Well, Erin, you're on board to teach most likely first grade next year in the Spanish Immersion Program. Yes. Um, this may be a foolish question, but are you bilingual? Si. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, what kind of uh, uh, training and education uh, have you received and, and uh, to get you to this point of being bilingual, being told mm -hmm. to uh, teach in the program? Um, well, I started learning Spanish in high school. I went, in, went on to college, took all five years of college classes and then when I finished college I decided well why not move to Spain and keep going with my language experience and so I lived there for a year last year and I call myself bilingual now. <laughs> <laughs> All right so how are you uh, how are you preparing to uh, teach in the Spanish immersion program? Is there some mm -hmm. things you have to do or books you have to read? And... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, basically in the next over the summer and then the rest of the school year, I'll be attending a lot of webinars, workshops, um, and taking some classes on teaching immersion and uh, incorporating world languages in the classroom. So if I recall last year, you were, you were in Spain and you were actually an immersion teacher there um, even though you were teaching English. Yes, yes, the, I was. Uh, there's, uh, I don't think maybe our, our listeners quite understand it, but there's there's some real tricks to understanding what immersion is all about and how mm -hmm. you go about teaching that. It's it's different than just teaching the regular courses. Mm -hmm. Essentially the the teaching style is different rather than doing everything basically orally and giving oral instruction. The teacher is a lot more animated, physical, they move mm -hmm. around the room, they use a lot of props, pictures, um, they play games, they sing songs. Um, I call it a little more active teaching, so it's exciting. <laughs> well, part of and part of the district efforts, uh, we're trying to get you a partner because we're going to mm -hmm. start this not only in kindergarten, <laughs> but we're going to start it in first grade. Yes. And uh, because you're teaching first grade at Goodview this year, you're mm -hmm. you're understanding all the curriculum, understanding yes. the standards, and you you'll have that down, and, and and next year it'll be much easier for you to teach in the immersion program, mm -hmm. having this this knowledge. But uh, we need to get you a partner to teach kindergarten. So <laughs> yes, that, please. Uh, and uh, so, if any of the listeners are out there are looking for a job, they're bilingual, they can mm -hmm. teach uh, kindergarten. Uh, give us a call. Mm -hmm. um, so, what what do you see as the benefits of this learning opportunity for these students that uh, you'll have next year? There are I know Vanessa so mentioned, many benefits. But, um, basically, you are bilingual. You can travel in the future. Being a bilingual citizen. Uh, by being involved in the immersion program and being bilingual, you could also become trilingual. You could learn French, German, another language, because once you learn a second language, your brain is already prepped with that language learning and, and it's a gateway to other languages. Um, I think that um, it, it opens up a door for uh, language uh, not only in Spanish, but also English, because at least for myself, when I'm reading a lot of things in English, and if there's a word I don't understand, I can sometimes connect that mm -hmm. to something I know in Spanish. Um, so yeah, there's, I mean, on top of what you've already said, there's so many other benefits. So how do you think we can be sure that young learners are grasping the fundamental skills for uh, English reading and so forth? Um, Spanish is a very phonetic language, so each letter has one sound, which is something that's very different from English, but I think that by learning Spanish and learning the structure of another language, 
it actually helps in the learning of English. So when students get to about third grade, when we start introducing, our plan is to start introducing mm -hmm. English grammar and all of um, the English concepts, I think they're going to really catch on quickly. So. Now I think, I think our listeners need to know that this is just not a program to learn how to speak Spanish. No. Explain the literacy not. part of this. Um, they're going to they're going to speak learn how to speak Spanish. They're going to learn how to write in Spanish. Um, they're also going to learn a huge cultural aspect, which then helps the students become very global citizens. They are going to pick up on Latin American culture, Spanish culture, um, and then because of that, they're going to have a little bit more awareness of all the different cultures and traditions that are all over our world today. So. Very good. The other thing I think the listeners need to uh, to know is mm -hmm. that that as we start this program in kindergarten and first grade next year, mm -hmm. the following year it'll be in second grade, third mm -hmm. grade, fourth grade, mm -hmm. and then go to the middle school. The district has made a commitment to this program and to these kids, especially those kids that are starting, that they will see this program all the way through high school. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a huge commitment, and and I think it's a tremendous opportunity for the for the young kids in the district. Yeah. You know, there's 35 businesses and industries in Winona that do business internationally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not always, in, they're not all in Spain or Mexico or, or Latin America. Um, but just given that, the opportunities for kids when they when they get done and go on to college are just come back to Winona and maybe be involved with an international uh, trade of some sort mm -hmm. or, uh, is, is really tremendous. So yeah. any other things you can think of while we're talking here, uh, Vanessa or Aaron? Sign up for SLIP. <laughs> <laughs> we still have uh, a couple slots open for our first grade next year. Kindergarten mm -hmm. is full. We had a lottery. We have actually 25 students in, in the kindergarten program. We have 21 or 22 in, uh, in the uh, first grade uh, for next year. We have a couple slots. So if you still are, if you're interested, you've got a child going into first grade uh, next fall and, and are interested in the SLIP or Spanish Language Immersion Program at Madison, uh, give us a call. So. Thank you both, uh, Aaron Weissenbeck and Vanessa Fernandez-Green, for being on Making the Grade today. Mm -hmm. You learned about Spanish Language Immersion Program at Madison next fall. This is Dr. Scott Hannon, Superintendent of Schools, thanking you for watching Making the Grade.